Matthew, the sixth chapter, and let's pray and release our faith. Believe with me, please, for utterance this morning, like always, but I'm getting into some things here that I hadn't really taught on before, ministered before. I'm seeing more light. I'm seeing things in a different light. Thank you, Master. And um, you believe with me, right? You know how to do it. You believe with me, because this affects not only you, but everybody else that will watch or hear this later on with technology. Somebody could be feeding on this message 20 years from now if the Lord tarries is coming. And, and so the, the revelation and light uh, doesn't age. How many know uh, this book, these, these things were written a long time ago, but they're still fresh and alive. And uh, so anything that comes out by the Spirit is by the same. He's the author of that book, right? And whatever he's saying now, it'd be the same way. So let's release our faith. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come together in faith, asking you to speak through me right now, beyond me, and to give every one of us eyes and ears and heart and mind that can perceive and see and hear and understand and show us how you see things. Show us how things really are. Set us free from wrong thinking and, and, and junk that we might have picked up along the way that's contrary to what you said or hindering in any way. We say, Lord, uh, your way, your will, your plan. Reveal it to us and we'll receive it. We'll believe it. We'll receive it. And by your grace, we'll do it. Not be a hearer only or forgetful hearer. And we'll be blessed when we do because you always perform your word in the lives of those who do. In Jesus' name, amen means so be it. In Matthew, the sixth chapter, I want you to notice a familiar verse of scripture to many. Verse 33 and then we're going to, to broaden and look at some context. And we're looking at some areas uh, differently than what I have uh, taught before. I, I believe we're, we're getting more light in some areas. And so uh, that's why I said, please believe with me. Matthew 6 and verse 33 says, Jesus said, well, let me read uh, uh, verse 31, he said, Take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. Well, you must need them if the Bible said God knows you need them. Somebody said out loud, God knows I need them. So sometimes you know, some people have said, well, we may not know what we need. And Listen, if your kids are hungry, you know they need something to eat, right? They need clothes. You need a place to live. You, if you owe, owe bills, you, you need money to pay your bills. Don't, don't get goofy with all this stuff. God himself knows you need it, right? <laughs> but here's the solution. After all these things, the Gentiles, the uh, unbelievers and, and unsaved, the world is seeking. What, what's the world seeking after? Making a living. Right? Some say, well, me too. That's, what, that's why I'm talking to you. <laughs> uh, we're, are we supposed to be different from the world? Yes. Do things different from, are we supposed to seek something different yes. than what the world, what's the world seeking after? What we're going to wear, what we're going to eat, where we're going to live, paying our bills, yep. right? Getting, maybe getting some extra for a hobby, some recreation, have some fun, retirement. Yeah. Somebody said, what's wrong with that? He didn't say anything was wrong with it. He said that's what the whole world's seeking after. And it's what the whole world is concerned and worrying about. Are we going to have enough to do everything we need to do? He said, you don't. You don't seek after that, verse 33, but seek ye, in other words, you seek what? Is this different from seeking after your, your daily necessities? Your, huh? It, it is. You seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now don't let that word righteousness throw you. Take the yus out of it and it's just rightness. 
How many know every, every way of God is right? What he says is right. What he does is right. His ways of doing things is right. Seek the kingdom of God and his ways and will and words, his right ways. And if you do all these things, all what things? All the things that the world is seeking after and worrying about. All those things, your food, your clothing, etc., that will be added unto you. They'll be added unto you. That's different from you adding them to yourself. That's Him adding them to you. Now, a lot of folks know this verse, but uh, they mostly get excited about the last phrase. <laughs> right? And you shout about all these things will be added to you, but come on, these things are not going to be added to you unless you do the first part. Unless you seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. It's amazingly how, amazing how much people work on God's part. <laughs> and focus on God's part when you really don't have to remind God to do His part. <laughs> but that's more, you know, more exciting a lot of times than thinking about your part because your part means something you're going to have to do. And it's easier to just not think about that and kind of pretend like, well, we're doing it and just focus on, whoo, all these things added to you. We're going to have them all added to us. Well, no, we're not unless we are. Now, y'all said a few minutes ago, you're going to help me preach this, right? You didn't forget, did you? If we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added to us. Do you, do you suppose everybody's seeking first the kingdom? Reckon how many are? Hmm? How about you? <laughs> what, what does it mean to seek the kingdom of God? Do we even know what that means? You got to watch about hearing something a lot. Just because it's familiar doesn't mean you understand what it means, much less that you're doing it. Right? And just, have we heard anything about the kingdom of God? It's, you know why you've heard so much about it? Because the Bible's so full of it. <laughs> Matthew, Mark, Luke is full of it. The Acts, the epistles are full of kingdom of God, kingdom of God, kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, kingdom of heaven. Have you seen it? Yeah. I know uh, uh, some years ago I was watching a news interview, a, a real international one, well-known one. And the interviewer who was a professed non-Christian, unbeliever, was interviewing uh, among some other folks of very well-known pastors and preachers. And uh, he said to them, he said, well, now, isn't it true, though? They're talking about some issues and things and, uh, around the world. Isn't it true, he said, that Jesus preached love and acceptance? And the pastors nodded their head, and the other guys, well, they said, yeah, yeah, that's right. And so he went on to proceed, you know, like, like usually folks do, to say then that if you're a real Christian, you should accept people's lifestyles and their sin and whatever you, if you, you know, you should accept it and accept them. No. No. And as, as they were talking about it, something bothered me about it on the inside and I didn't really know what it was. And so they said it again. And I want, I want you to back up here and listen to this. Here's an unbeliever telling some wonderful anointed men and women of God what Jesus preaches. <laughs> Is there something wrong with this picture? Yeah, well, now how about you? Don't let unbelievers tell you what the Bible says and what Jesus preaches and who He is. They don't even know Him. Don't let them tell you. What Jesus preached. And as they said it again, you know, Jesus preached love and acceptance. As they said it again, inside me, I don't mean I heard an audible voice, but inside me, the Lord spoke to me. He said, I did not. 
That's not what I preached. How many know the Lord's inside you? Do you know this or not? If you'll learn how to pay attention, he'll speak to your heart. Now, when he said that, I thought, hmm, wow. Because I, I didn't hear anything. Something bothered me about it. But that phrase, Jesus preached love and acceptance. Well, that sounds good, don't it? But is it Bible? What did he actually preach? And so I went into detail looking in Matthew and Mark and Luke and John. And everywhere it said what he preached. I wrote it down. I made notes out of it. And I saw he never said a word about acceptance. He preached repentance and the kingdom of God. He talked about it all the time. Now, there's a big difference between acceptance and repentance. <laughs> Isn't there? Should we preach what he preached? You'll see that in the book of Acts, they preached the kingdom of God. Paul preached it. Philip preached it. Others preached it. It's, it's, it's been the emphasis from the beginning. And what are we supposed to seek? The kingdom of God and His righteousness. Are you ready for the next part? Hmm? Okay. <laughs> uh, back up a little bit earlier in the chapter. Matthew 6. I need to lay some foundation. We've got some really good things to get to. But we can't get to those parts until we get this. Got to get this. How many of there's no need putting the car in, in gear until you start it up? <laughs> uh, we read in, we're just reading there in Matthew 6.33. Back up to verse uh, 9. Matthew 6, 9. This is part of the same chapter, isn't it? Just a few verses earlier, I want you to see this is not a new thought he's introducing. He's already been talking about this. And in Matthew 6, 9, he, he's telling them and us how to pray. He said, pray after this manner, like this. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What's the very next thing he says? See, he's already been talking about the kingdom. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Now these two phrases are connected. We'll understand much about the kingdom by understanding that God's, where God's kingdom is, His will is done. What is God's kingdom? Well, it's the king's dominion. It's where the word kingdom it's formed of those words. Uh, it's where the king reigns. In fact, Young's literal translation says reign almost everywhere. It says kingdom in the King James. Instead of saying, seek ye first the kingdom of God, it says, seek ye first the reign of God. The, reign, the kingdom of God is where God reigns it's what God reigns over. And what are we supposed to be seeking? What He reigns over. We're supposed to be seeking that. And not just seeking making a living. Not just seeking living. Well, you got to live. <laughs> well, no, there's another way to live. It's a faith life. Hmm? Right? It's a life of faith, and in living by faith, you don't spend all your time seeking your necessities and desires. You spend your energies seeking the advancement of what God reigns over. And as you're doing that, He adds everything to you that you need to do that, to accomplish that. Hallelujah. He said... Pray like this. Let's read the rest of that prayer. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Keep going. Give us this day our daily bread. Keep going. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us for evil, from evil. For what? 
For thine is the kingdom. Somebody say the kingdom. kingdom. What is the kingdom? It's whatever the king is reigning over. It's the king's dominion or rule or reign. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And then a few verses later, he says, don't seek what the world's seeking after. You seek the kingdom. And God's righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Now, what is God ruling over? What is God's rule? What is God's kingdom? We, some weeks ago, I guess it's been um, longer than, actually we began the series a year ago, this month, talking about you choose, I believe it was. And uh, we got into a lot of detail about the common beliefs and phrases of people saying God is in control. God is in complete control. And everything happens for a reason. And these kind of phrases. And these are, the, God is sovereign. And these concepts people will fight you over. And yet we find them to be contrary to Scripture. So if some of this sounds strange to you, don't just say, well, I don't think I agree with that preacher. Get, get that serious. It won't cost you anything. Go through the verses hmm? and see what they say. Because it's just not so. So God's, God's in control of what? Of everything. Really? And everything that happens, no matter how terrible it was, people say, well, God must have had some purpose. Implying that somehow everything is the will and plan and purpose of God. I want you to know that's not true. I said, that's not true. Now, we spent weeks and weeks going through lots of scriptures about it. And and please, uh, take advantage of those materials. Get them. Go through it. And, and see what we're talking about. Because we're building now on that. Yes, we are. What we're doing now is built. You know the Lord gives you. And then he gives you more. And then he gives you more. So now we're talking about the kingdom of God. And when he says. When he says uh, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Is God's will being done all over the earth? Yes. If it is. Why would you need to pray? That it would be. And if God is already reigning over everything and everybody, why do we need to seek the expansion and advancement of his kingdom if it's already happening? What Psalm 115 says, uh, in fact, put it up on the screen for us. You don't have to turn there, but what is it, 115, 16, I think it is? 115, 16. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's. And he is reigning there and is in complete control. But the earth is another story. (laughs) Why? He gave it to the children of men. And there's a problem. (laughs) He gave it to us. Hmm? (laughs) Go with me if you would to Luke the fourth chapter please. Luke chapter 4. In Luke chapter 4, verse 1, Jesus, being full of the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Forty days he was what? Tempted of the devil. Was he really tempted? The Bible said he was. Hebrews said he was tempted in all points, just like us, yet without sin. It's not a sin to be tempted. It's a sin to yield to it, give in to it. And so in, he was tempted of the devil 40 days. In those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. Keep going. The devil said to him, if you be the Son of God... Command this stone that it be made bread. Keep going. Jesus said, it's written, man will not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. 
And the devil takes him up into a high mountain and showed him what? Showed to him all the kingdoms of the world. Now, what, today, if we were talking about the kingdoms of the world, tell me some of them. United States of America is a kingdom. Its government reigns over these states, right, and territories. Um, China, UK, right? There are many kingdoms. And there were numbers of kingdoms then. There was the Roman kingdom. And the devil showed them to Jesus. He showed him these kingdoms in a moment of time. And uh, showed them all to him. In verse 6, the devil said to him, all this power, that's the word for authority. All what authority? The authority to reign over all these kingdoms will I give you. Now, a lot of Christians read that and they go, he couldn't do that. He didn't have it. Then it wouldn't have been a temptation. Don't you think Jesus would have known if he didn't have it and couldn't do it? And if he'd have known, it wouldn't have been a temptation. Was it a temptation? The Bible said it was. Right? Scripture said it. We just got through reading. I mean the caption up at the top of your page, what does it say? The temptation. <laughs> right? We just got through reading. It said he was tempted. This is one of the main temptations that he experienced during that time period. The devil said, all this authority of all these kingdoms, I will give it to you. And the glory of them. For that is delivered to me. Well, who delivered it to him? Who gave it to the devil? Not God. I said, not God. The earth has he give, God gave to who? Children of men. He gave it to Adam and Eve. They're the ones. And then their descendants after them that yielded to the wrong thing and delivered it to him. And he said, uh, to whomsoever I will, I give it. The Bible, Jesus called the devil, I don't know, three or four places in the gospel accounts, the prince of this world. Second Corinthians 4.4 4 refers to the devil as the God of this world. Well, if he's the God of this world, the kingdom of God is not reigning over all this world. Come on, are y'all with me? And God is not controlling everything down here. I know a lot of Christian folks don't like this. But you know what the number one enemy of the word of God is? The traditions of men. It has replaced the Bible in churches all over the world. People will fight you over stuff that they got no scripture for. That other scripture contradicts, but mama believed it and their denomination has preached it for 200 years. Come on, are you listening? And they, they, they'd hold to that no matter what the Bible says. But all of us need to be ready and open that if the Bible contradicts us, we're wrong. Right? I don't care how long you thought that way. I don't care if mom and them, daddy and them, grandpa, grandma, everybody you know thought it and believed it. Hmm? If it was wrong 300 years ago, it's still wrong today. Just because a lot of people believe it doesn't make it right. You can believe anything you want to. Doesn't make it true. He was, well, I got a right to my beliefs. Actually, you don't. Me either. If Jesus is your Lord... You're supposed to believe what he tells you to believe. Amen. Not just make stuff up as you go along. Amen. Well, now I just believe. You ever heard that? <laughs> well, whoop de doo <laughs> That don't mean a thing. <laughs> I got right to my belief. Not if Jesus is your Lord. 
You don't. You need to, how many believe Christians ought to believe what the Christ tells them to believe or to believe what this book says and not other stuff? Well, the truth is the kingdom of God is not reigning over all this world and over all the people. I mean, you don't even have to think very hard to realize that. Look at the place. Huh? What is going on down here? What's going on down here? What do we know about the devil when he reigns? What he reigns over, what do you see? Jesus said, the thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Are we seeing any killing and stealing and destroying in the earth? Then who's reigning over that? The devil, not God. Not God. But what should you and I be seeking? Which is what? God ruling over. We should be seeking, number one, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but number one, you should see to it that God rules over you. Hmm? It's not automatic. God is only reigning over you to the degree you're yielding to Him. He's not going to make you do anything. And having yielded to Him, allowing Him to reign over us, then we should be on a mission. What's that mission? Anybody know? For Him to reign over the people I work with and the people I live by. Come on, are you listening? And to reign over everybody around me. Let's spread out this kingdom, right? We want him reigning over everybody. Now he's not, but he could be. Eventually, I said eventually, every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess. It's not happening right now. But you and I have a job to seek first the kingdom, the reign and rule of the king. Hallelujah. Christianity is not just getting God to help us live our life. (laughs) Build our kingdom. God help me. I need money to do my thing. I need need you to heal me so I can build my kingdom. No, no. No, we're supposed to be building His. Right? And that's why you'll see this last part of Luke, Matthew 6, 33, not coming to pass. If if all these things are not being added to you, where's the first place to look? Are we really seeking first His kingdom? Because so many times people are not. They're not. They just won't help pursuing their dreams. And their life, doing what they want to do. They're not interested in building the kingdom, advancing the kingdom, expanding God's reign. Oh, there's coming a time when the glory of the Lord is going to cover the earth like the waters cover the sea. And how many know that anybody that had a part in that expansion is going to be rewarded forever? And remembered forever. There's millions and millions of people on this planet right now. They don't care a thing about God. They don't even believe in Him. He has no reign over them. They're giving Him no place. And you know what? If if God's not reigning over you, you know who is? You're not just doing your own thing. People think they are. But Satan is the God of this world. Isn't he? And he's reigning. And you can tell it by all the stealing and all the killing and all the destruction and destroying. I tell you what you can say, though, as for me and my house, (laughs) God's going to reign over us. His His dominion extends over me. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. His dominion includes me, extends over me. The devil said, if you'll you'll bow down, all this will be yours. And Jesus said, you get behind me, Satan. 
It's written, you worship the Lord your God and Him only shall you serve. Why was that a temptation? Who's he talking to? The King of kings and Lord of lords. What is the King of kings' destiny? Revelation says there's coming a time when it'll be said the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That's his destiny. He is going to reign over all. And the devil is saying, no need to go to the cross, no need to wait. Let me give you a shortcut right here. You worship me and the kingdoms are yours. And he was tempted. I know that sounds strange to religious ears, but you either believe the Bible or you don't. He was tempted, but he didn't yield to it. I said he didn't yield to it. He said, no, no, get behind me. Right? We don't have to take shortcuts either, do we? We get, get it right. Get God's best. Go with me, please, to Matthew the 13th chapter, I want you to notice something. When those folks in that interview said, you know, Jesus preached love and acceptance, and the Lord spoke to my heart, no, I didn't. And I found out when he preached repentance in the kingdom, I began to see how many times he brings it up. He brings it up. Have you ever noticed how often the parables and examples he gave were about the kingdom. I want to give you a one chapter example. <laughs> one chapter example in Matthew 13. Matthew 13, and I believe it's verse 11. I'm not going to read all of it, but, but uh, verse 11, Jesus said, it's given to you to know what? The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. wonder how many people on the planet have no clue about a kingdom of God or heaven. You and I are privileged. I said we're privileged to know about it. And even more so to be involved in it. In the expansion of it. In verse 19. 19. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, did you know the gospel is called the gospel of the kingdom? What is the gospel? Yeah, but do you always think good news about the kingdom? See, people have separated the gospel from the kingdom. And Jesus preached the good news about the kingdom. So did Paul. So did the guys in, in the book of Acts, in the epistles. The good news is the good news about the kingdom. Tell me what the kingdom of God is. What's the kingdom of God? It's whatever he's reigning over, ruling over. Uh, the, the, anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understands it, not the wicked one comes and tries to catch away that word that was sown in his heart. The, what word? The word of the kingdom. Verse 24. Another parable he put forth to them, the kingdom of God is like to a man which sowed good seed in his field. Verse 31, another parable he put forth to them, he said what? The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed. Verse 33, another parable he spakes of the kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven. Now when you think mustard seed, do you think kingdom? <laughs> That's why he gave it. Right? When you think the sower sows the word, that's about the kingdom. Can you see what I'm talking about? There's been a disconnect. Do we want to preach what Jesus preached? Do we want to see it the way he saw it? The, these guys were very, very kingdom minded. Jesus, uh, all his disciples, the, the 12, the 70, the masses that did follow him, and it didn't change. Do you know one of the first things he talked about when he was raised from the dead? Look in the book of Acts, chapter 1. It said he expounded to them the things about the kingdom. Yeah. Acts 1. Yes. You know what Paul preached about? 
The last chapter of the book of Acts said he expounded all day long from the law and the prophets the things about the kingdom of God and Jesus. <laughs> How many think we ought to preach about Jesus and the kingdom? Jesus and the kingdom. Jesus and the kingdom. Now I know that some people have taken things about the kingdom and twisted some stuff out of it. But forget about all that. Forget about all that. Let's see what Jesus said about the kingdom. Tell me what the kingdom is. Let's don't make it hard at all. Let's make it very, very simple. What is the kingdom? It's whatever God is actually reigning over. Is he reigning over everybody on the earth? No, he's not. No, he's not. But he's reigning over us. Can you? Hmm? I said he's reigning over us. What verse am I on there? I'm not through. 38. 38. The, the field is the world. The good seed are the what? Children. children of the kingdom. The tares are the children of the wicked one. Uh, 41. Verse 41. The Son of Man will send forth his angels. They'll gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them that do iniquity. Verse 43. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun. Where? In the kingdom. Of their father who has ears to hear, let him hear. 44. The kingdom of, again, have you seen this before? Again. <laughs> See, how many, let me, let me give you a challenge. Find parables and examples that Jesus talked about that didn't have anything to do with the kingdom. <laughs> the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in the field, which when a man has found it, he hides, and for joy therefore thereof goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Why? That's what the kingdom is like. Verse 45, again, the kingdom of heaven is like to a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who when he's found one pearl of great price, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Is he seeking that? above everything else. Come on, can you see this? That's the way we're supposed to be. We're not supposed to be sad that we think we have to sacrifice. We're to be excited that we get to have a part of the kingdom. Because everything down here is temporary. It's growing old. It's passing away. But his kingdom shall never end. And those that have a part in it will endure forever. Forever. There come a day, not too, too much longer, there won't be any U.S. of A. There won't be any uh, U.K. Or, uh, or China, whatever. Uh, there won't be any of those kingdoms. There will be the kingdom of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And there will be a group of redeemed ones that rule and reign with him. Somebody say glory to God. Will you be in that number? <coughs> if so, it'll be because you did some things here to advance the kingdom. That qualifies you for your involvement in the kingdom past this life. We'll show you that in scriptures here. I started to say shortly, but... <laughs> You can come back sometime, right? Uh, 47. Again, the kingdom of heaven's like to a net that was cast into the sea, gathered of every kind. Verse 52. He said, every scribe that's instructed in the kingdom of heaven, it's like a man that's a householder that brings forth out of his treasure things new and old. That's one chapter. Kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. Somebody say kingdom. I'm telling you, they had kingdom on the brain. They did. They, they thought about it. They talked about it. In fact, go to, uh, go to Luke. I'm giving you some extra, but you act like you can take it. Luke 19 and 11. Jesus tells us what the kingdom is like. And you see what 
uh, you know, in addition to the Spirit of God prompting him, what spurred this as they heard these things? What do, what do you hear when you hear Jesus talk? <laughs> as they heard these things, he added a parable because he was near to Jerusalem and because they thought the kingdom of God should immediately appear. Why did they think it was going to appear immediately? Because he talked about it all the time. <laughs> and they thought, man, it's probably tomorrow. Right? <laughs> it's probably tomorrow. So he had to give them some instruction about it. <laughs> Should we be as excited about the kingdom? Yes. Do you think most of the church world is excited about it? No, because, see, things have been lost and twisted. And, and, and Christianity has become this God helping me with my life. Come on, are you listening? Basically helping me build my kingdom. <laughs> but no, he's already got a kingdom, right? And you don't need your own kingdom. A place in his kingdom is the greatest honor you could ever have, Amen. right? His kingdom needs to be built and advanced and expanded. And they thought it was immediately appearing. Keep, keep reading for a few verses here. He said, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself what? A kingdom and to return. Who's he talking about? He's talking about himself. What's going to happen? Went far away and then was returning. Did Jesus leave? Yeah. Is he coming back? Yeah. Back up to 12, verse 12. He went to do what? Receive for himself a kingdom. And to what? Return. You and I are involved in the receiving of the kingdom. In advancing it. Aren't people coming in? Huh? Is God's reign expanding? It is. Now to hear, of course, you know, who's influencing these folks, but to hear a lot of people tell it, you know, the church is dwindling and drying up and, and, and the young people are leaving and going away from God and, and, and lies, lies. The biggest churches that have ever been on the planet exist today. There are churches all over the place that, that 50,000 people. And there are tongue talkers and people that use the name of Jesus and miracle and healing believers all over the planet by the millions, 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 and they're multiplying. The devil's losing ground. Does anybody know how this is going to wind up? <laughs> He's going to lose it all. He's going to lose it all. There's coming a time when he will not be reigning over anything down here. And God's will will be done completely on the earth exactly like it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth just like it is in heaven. What's it like when God's really completely in control? Heaven. You know what the crime rate is in heaven? Do you know how much disease and poverty they got in heaven? None. You know why? God is in complete control. He is reigning totally over. And you read about it in the scripture. There's coming a time when there will be no more curse in this earth. None. No more death. No more dying. No more sorrow, no more crying. Why? God will be reigning. I said God will be reigning. The reign of God, the kingdom of God will be manifested over all this earth. But for now, the nobleman is the master. He's gone to receive the kingdom and to return. Keep going. He called his ten servants, delivered them ten pounds, and said to them, Occupy till I come. Occupy in what? The kingdom. In the kingdom. Keep going. His, but his citizens hated him. And they sent a message and said, What? We will not have this man. 
to reign over us. Are there millions of people on this planet saying that today? They're saying we don't believe him. We don't believe in him. We don't receive it. We don't accept it. We will not. We won't have it. And so he's allowing them during this time to reject his lordship. And he is not going to force his reign on them during this period unless they want him to. Unless they receive him. But aren't you thankful that the Lord helped you to see the light and receive him and let him reign over you? Aren't you thankful we're not blind and ignorant and lost somewhere today? Whew. Oh, thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. They said, we won't have this man to reign over us. Keep going. It came to pass when he was returned, what? Having received the kingdom. In time to come, we're going to read from 1 Corinthians and some other places exactly how this is, is going to, to happen, flow out. But having received the kingdom, he commanded these servants to be called to whom he had given the money that he might know how much every man gained by trading. Keep going. He came to the first, the first one came and said, Lord, your pound has gained 10 pounds. In doing what? Doing things for the kingdom. He gave this individual resources. And he used it to expand the kingdom. Oh, somebody say glory to God. Now his life is over. The earth's opportunity for salvation, all that has, has passed. And the Lord says, okay, what would you do now with what I gave you to, to do in the kingdom? He said, glory to God, Lord, with your help. <laughs> we, we expanded that thing ten times. <laughs> and what did the Lord say? Come on, what did the Lord say? Well done. Well, done. well, done. well you good servant, because you've been faithful in a very little. Have thy authority over ten City, what ten cities? In the Where? In the At this point, there is no U.S. of A. or, or U.K. What kingdoms? Is you suppose these cities are real or imaginary? Real. Wow! <laughs> you, you, possible that you? could be reigning over ten cities in the eternal kingdom of God. Don't say, whoo, I don't know if I can handle that. Look, you know I want to sit around on a, on, a, on a cloud playing a harp for the next zillion years. You're going to want something to do, right? And, and God's going to have something for you to do. And it's real. And it's awesome. I said, it's awesome. Who got the authority over the ten cities? The person that used what God gave them to expand and do his work while he was here. Come on, can you see this? The next one said, keep going. The second one said, Lord, your pound has gained five pounds. Verse 19, so he said, uh, you get 10 cities too. No. no, five. But still, good and faithful servant. Is everybody, is it going to be uh, divine socialism? No. Everybody gets the same. No, it's not. No, it's not. Some are going to rule over ten. Some are going to rule over five. Some are going to, like this next guy, over none. Right? The guy that didn't do anything with what God gave him? Hid it? Buried it? No. You see, the kingdom of God, people are, all of us, are qualifying for what's going to happen in this, after this life. In time to come. And if you're seeking what you want, and you're seeking to, you know, only to do your thing and, and make yourself comfortable and get your needs met, that's all going to be over very soon, isn't it? And if that's all you sought after, it's not going to matter past this life. But the Lord has given us a way, a different way to live than the rest of the world. Somebody said, well, I've got to make a living. What do you mean? See, so much of that is fear-driven. If I don't do this, we're not going to make it. Well, you see, you're acting like you are the provider. If you'll do what he told you to do, do you suppose he could take care of you? Yes. Could he? 
I know from experience. I mean, I, I come from uh, multiple generations of hard, hard-working folks. For real. My, my granddad worked so hard, multiple jobs. He strained his body working cotton crops and corn patches and timber and all that, and, and broke down his health, really. My dad working multiple jobs, his lungs collapsed, and, and, and boy, they, they both taught me. And you know, uh, if you don't work, you're sorry. Just a sorry low down. You work, and you work hard. And it's good to be diligent. Don't misunderstand me. There's a lot of lazy folks around today that could use a good dose of that. But at the same time, when I answered the call to the ministry, and I began to realize I need to study and pray, it was hard on me. I'm laying across the bed in the middle of the day thinking, I need to be outside working. <laughs> I need to be, you know, how's your bills going to get paid? And then finally, I'm in the ministry for a little while, and I'm preaching on God being your source, God being your source. But again, I still had that work uh, connection thing that I had to be beating the bushes. I had to be out there. I had to be going. And I had preached on God being your source for like six months. And the Lord said, okay, now I want you to demonstrate that. <laughs> it was the end of the year. It was around Christmas time. And the Lord dealt with me, don't go anywhere. Don't have any meetings. I thought, Lord, it's Christmas time. It's, you know, we, I think we had two or three employees and they'll want a bonus and, and we'll need some money. And the Lord dealt with me. He said, you believe what you preach or not now? You going to do it or not? Who's your source? See, it's easy to say God's my source. But then when it comes time when you need something, where do you go? Who do you go to? What do you try to do? And I did. I did. I, I didn't go out. I didn't do anything he told me to do for that period of time. And did you know what happened? All those things were added to me while I was doing what he told me to do. And I got a revelation and I said, okay, this is not just about what I can produce. If I will do what he tells me to do, seeking the kingdom, the needs will be met. Now, if you're just being lazy and goofing off, you're going to get in trouble. But if you're doing what he told you to do, putting the kingdom first, seeking the kingdom first, do you believe what he said? All these things will be added to you. The world's trying to add them to themselves. You're not. You're seeking the expansion of his kingdom. You want him to rule over you and everybody else. And you're doing everything you can to get other folks under his rule, under his dominion. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Master. Go with me to two openings, please. James chapter 4, and then I think we'll go to Romans 14. James chapter 4, now this is, uh, we'll be talking about some of these things later, I believe. We just introduced some things today. Enough to chew on though, huh? James chapter 4, verse 6, what does it say? God gives more grace. Wherefore, he says, God resists the proud. Is the devil proud? He is the proudest. But he gives grace to the humble. Keep reading. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Is the devil trying to rule over everybody down here and everything? Yes, he is. He is. If you're not yielding yourselves to God, are you going to be free from the enemy's influence? And to me, no, you're not. No, you're not. If you're not submitting, don't expect submission. Everybody listening. It's not, it doesn't work that way. If you're not submitting to the Lord, don't expect to walk in authority and to reign in life. 
Remember the seven sons of Siva? They're going to take authority over a wrong spirit. And they got beat up. Remember that? Got their clothes tore off of them. And ran out of the house injured and naked. Why? Because they, they weren't submitting themselves to God. They're trying to exercise dominion and the enemy submit and, and to them and their commands and they haven't submitted themselves to God. That doesn't work. The enemy knows he doesn't have to. He knows if you're yielding to him, he doesn't have to yield to you. <laughs> right? <laughs> so rebellion is a very, very bad thing. Because if you're yielding to rebellion, the devil doesn't have to yield to you. If you're not submitting, don't expect submission. The only way to walk in authority like Jesus walked in this earth is to walk in submission to God. Submission to His Lordship. Submission to His rulership. Come on, are you listening? Yielding to Him. Was Jesus yielded to him? Yes. Completely. He said, I didn't come down from heaven to do my own will, but to do the will of him that sent me and to finish the work. I don't say what I, my, my own words. I say what he tells me to say. I don't do my own uh, actions. I do what he shows me to do. He was completely submitted to the Father. Didn't he pray there at the end? Not my will, but your will be done. And didn't he walk in authority? He walked in authority. He commanded the winds and the waves and the evil spirits and disease and death, and they obeyed. Why? Did he do this verse we're looking at right here? Yes. Well, read it again, verse 7. What does it say? Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Let him reign over you. Let him rule over you. Don't just look at him as a help to do what you want to do in life. Let him reign over you. Let him rule over you. The Bible says we're supposed, to, we're supposed to think like soldiers, good soldiers. What do soldiers do? They follow orders. Do we have a king of kings? Yes. Jesus is not just our counselor. Hmm? He's not just our advisor. Is he? Somebody say, Jesus is, Jesus is. my Lord. My Lord. What does Lord mean? Lord means he's over me. He rules over me. He reigns over me. That means, supposed to mean, he tells us what to do. Come on, help me out, help me out. He tells us what to do and then what happens? And we do it. <laughs> oh boy, I wish it was that simple. <laughs> it can be. If we'll choose it. But if you don't, then you're not going to be, we're not going to be successful resisting the enemy and him fleeing from us. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. In Romans 14, in closing, go over there. We'll leave you with this though. God is not at present reigning over everybody on this planet. God is not ruling in all the governments of the earth. Now, a lot of things to consider here. When we pray as believers and ask Him to get involved, He does. But that doesn't mean that He's taken it over and that everything is under His control. And uh, all you got to look and see is what's going on in the earth Stealing, killing, and destroying. We know that's the enemy. We know he is acting as God of this world. He is ruling and reigning, and these things are the results. How can you tell when God is ruling and reigning? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Look at this verse. Romans 14 and 17. The Young's Literal Translation. Let's read it out of that one. Young's Literal. King, King James says the kingdom of God. Young's Literal says the reign of God 
is not eating and drinking. It's not natural. What is the reign of God? Take the yus out. just means rightness. When God's reigning over it, it gets right. Huh? It's done right. It is right. What else? When God's reigning over it, you're going to see peace. Peace. When God's reigning over it, what are you going to see? Joy. Joy. Is that like it is in heaven? Everything's right. Everything's peace. Everything's joy. Why? Because God's reigning completely. And when God reigns over your house, when God reigns over your house, things get right. He begins to reign over your mind because you yield it to him. And your heart and your life and your things, you begin to experience more peace and more joy than you ever have. Because of just talk, instead of talking a bunch of religious stuff about God being in control, he actually is beginning to reign in your life because you're yielding to him. Oh, can you say glory to God? And then it should be that the goodness of God in your life is evangelistic. And people around you see it and they see the peace you have and the joy you have and how things are right and they're going, how do you do that? And you say, hey, there's a kingdom. Glory to God. The kingdom of God. And it can be over you too. It can include you too. You can, get, you can have God reign in your life if you yield to him. Can you say amen? Stand on your feet, everybody.